Sutra. If there are yakshas who want to get out of their present fate, I will appear before them in the body of a yaksha and speak dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. Commentary If there are yakshas, yakshas is a Sanskrit word which means speedy, speedy, chia yi. It also means courageous and strong, yung chan. Yakshas are all, uh, a kind of ghost. There are three main types of ghosts earth traveling ghosts, flying ghosts, spacing, space traveling ghosts. A line on the Suragama mantra is Yucha Chia It refers to the Yakshas. In the mantra, the names of the kings of various kinds of ghosts are called. Each king of ghosts rules over a lot of lesser ghosts, and when the name of the ruler is called, all the other ghosts must also respectfully obey one's commands. If the Yakshas want to get out of their present fate, if they don't want to be ghosts, I will appear before them in the body of a Yaksha and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. Kuan Yin Bodhisattva will manifest as a Yaksha ghost and help them obtain their wish. Sutra, if there are Gandavas who wish to be freed from their destiny, I will appear before them in the body of a Gandava and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. Commentary, if there are Gandavas, Gandava is a Sanskrit word that means incense, skanda, xiang yin, because the act of smelling incense forms their consciousness. They are musicians for the Jet Emperor. When the Jet Emperor lies sinking in the water in sense wood, they smell the fragrance and are attracted. They come and enjoy making music for the Jet Emperor. These Gandavas may wish to be freed from their destiny as the Gandavas. They do not want to be Gandavas anymore. I will appear before them in the body of a Gandava and speak drama for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. So try if there are asuras who wish to be liberated from their destiny. I will appear before them in the body of an asura and speak drama for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. Commentary If there are asuras who wish to be liberated from their destiny, they want to leave the retinue of asuras. I will appear before them in the body of an asura and speak drama for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. This section includes the beings of the Eightfold Division of Ghosts and Spirits, but in the Suragama Sutra, the Arudas are not included. In the Universal Door chapter of the Lotus Sutra, it is related that Kranin Bodhisattva appears in the body of a Garuda also. Garuda is a Sanskrit word. It means great golden-winged palm bird, Da Peng Jin Chi Nyao. Garudas are also part of the eight divisions, and the fact that the sutra does not include them here is perhaps the fault of an omission in copying the text, or perhaps they are understood to be included in the general category of living beings mentioned below. Garudas diet exclusively on dragons. The wingspan is 330 great Uranas. A small urana is 40 Chinese miles. One Chinese mile is approximately one-third of an English mile. A middle-sized urana is 60 miles. A great urana is 80 miles. With one flap of, of its wings, the golden-winged pong bird flaps away all the waters of the seas. Its strength is that great. Once the waters of the seas are gone, the dragon are exposed. In this way, the Garuda was just about to finish off the entire population of dragons, so the dragons went to see the Buddha to seek rescue. Well, the great golden winged pong bird is also is about to cause the retinue of dragons to become extinct. What can be done? They sought the Buddha's compassion in helping them out. They hoped he would forbid the pong bird to eat them. The Buddha gave the dragon pieces of his kashaya for them 
to attach their horns. After that, the pong bird dared not eat them. With nothing to eat, the pong bird also went to the Buddha to ask him to save his life. No one is eating you, said the Buddha. Why have you come and asked to be saved? It's true that no one is threatening me, but without anything to eat, I will die of starvation, said the pong. You don't permit me to eat dragons anymore, and with nothing to eat, I'm about to die of hunger. So he asked the Buddha to be compassionate and think of a way to help him. You don't have anything to eat. All right, after this, I will feed you. Every time I and my own disciple, all my disciples eat, we will offer something you to you to eat. You don't have to eat dragons anymore. That is why, during the high meal offering at noon, a little of the food is taken outside and offered to the great golden-winged pongbird. This sutra does not mention the Garuda, but we should be aware that the eightfold division of ghosts and spirits includes this kind of being. Sutra, if there are kinaras who wish to transcend their fate, I will appear before them in the body of the kinara and speak dharma for them enabling them to accomplish their wish. Commentary If there are kinaras who wish to transcend their fate, kinara also a Sanskrit word means questionable spirit, yi shen. They are so called because they appear to be human, but on their heads is a horn. They are another type of music spirit that plays music for the great emperor. I will appear before them in the body of a kinara and speak dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. Sutra, if there are Mahuragas who wish to be freed from their destiny, I will appear before them in the body of a Mahuraga and speak dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. Commentary, if there are Mahuragas, Mahuraga is a Sanskrit word which means Great Python spirit, Da Mang Shen, and also Earth Dragon, Di Lung. The dragons mentioned above can roam in space and are called heavenly dragons. This python, also called a dragon, is confined to the earth. It does not have spiritual powers. Mahuragas are also one of the beings of the Eightfold Division of Ghosts and Spirits. If Mahuragas wish to be freed from their destiny, I will appear before them in the body of a Mahuraga and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. Sutra, if they are living beings who like being pupil and want to continue to be pupil, I will appear in the body of a person and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. Commentary. If they are living beings who like being pupil and want to continue to be pupil, they want to be pupil life after life. They like being a person and always want to be a person. So, Kwanin Bodhisattva says, I will appear in the body of a person and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. He will speak Dharma for these kinds of beings and help them to be successful in their wish. Sutra, if they are non-humans, whether with form or without form, whether with thought or without thought, who long to be freed from their des destiny, I will appear before them in the body like theirs and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. Commentary, if they are non-humans, this refers to animals and creatures other than people who are with form or without form, with thought or without thought, if there are beings like these who long to be freed from their destiny, I will appear before them in a body like theirs and speak Dharma for them, enabling them to accomplish their wish. With form means that they have a tangible, visible shape. Without form means that they have no visible shape. There are many kinds of beings with thought. Beings without thought include earth, wood, metal, and stone. Beings without form originally were sentient beings, but they have dispersed to emptiness and fallen into oblivion. This is usually a temporary state 
and at some point they can again go through rebirth and become a person. Sutra, this is called the wonderful purity of the 32 response bodies by which one enters into all lands and accomplishes self-mastery by means of the samadhi of becoming permitted with hearing and cultivating hearing and by means of the miraculous strength of the faultlessness. Commentary, this is called the wonderful purity of the 32 response bodies by which one enters into all lands and accomplishes self-mastery by means of the samadhi of becoming permitted with hearing and cultivating hearing. One develops the skill of turning back the hearing to get a self-nature by cultivating every day, and one applies the miraculous strength of effortlessness. Effortlessness refers to a wonderful principle of the unconditioned. With it, there is no need to go through the conception of an idea and the thought process of working out the idea. As people must when they want to do something, the Bodhisattva does not have to conceive the idea or think it through. Within Samadhi, he can do all kinds of things. In the Samadhi of becoming permitted with hearing and cultivating hearing, he can attain the miraculous power of effortlessness. And in this way, he accomplishes self-mastery. Very naturally, matters are taken care of. Sutra, also won't honored one, using this vara samadhi of becoming permitted with hearing and cultivating hearing, and using the miraculous strength of the faultlessness, because I have a kind regard equally for all living beings in the six, six paths. I go throughout the ten directions and the ten and the three builders of time and cause all living beings to who and cut the bodies of mine to receive the meritorious virtue of fourteen kinds of fearlessness. Commentary Also won't honored one, using this vara samadhi of becoming permitted with hearing and cultivating hearing, and using the miraculous strength of effortlessness, because I have a kind regard equally for all living beings in the six paths, I have a regard for the kindness of the Buddha Dharma. Just as do all beings in the six paths of gods, humans, asuras, animals, hungry ghosts, and beings in the hells, I go throughout the ten directions and the three periods of time, past, present, and future. I cultivated the practice of being permitted with hearing until I attained the Vara Samadhi and I did not need to conceptualize or think about things in order to be able to do them. I caused all living beings who enter the bodies of mine to receive the meritorious virtue of 14 kinds of fearlessness. I have attained 14 kinds of virtue of bestowing fearlessness. Sutra, first, because I do not contemplate sounds for my own sake, but rather listen to the sounds of those whom I contemplate. I can enable living beings throughout the ten divisions who are suffering and in distress to attain liberation by contemplating their selves. Commentary, this is the first of the fourteen kinds of fearlessness. First, because I do not contemplate selves for my own sake, but rather listen to the sounds of those whom I contemplate. I can enable living beings throughout the ten directions who are suffering and in distress to attain liberation by contemplating their sounds. It's not that he just takes note of his own sound, he contemplates the sounds of beings in the world. Since my skill at returning the hearing to hear the self nature is accomplished, there's no need for me to contemplate myself. I can contemplate all the living beings in the world and enable those who are anguished to be freed. I listen regarding their sounds of suffering and I enable them to attain liberation. Sutra, second, since my knowledge and views have turned around and come back, I can make it so that if living beings are caught in a raging fire, the fire will not burn them. Commentary Second, 
since my knowledge and views have turned around and come back, that is, since Quanshin Bodhisattva has a skill of returning the light to an illumined within, I can make it so that if living beings are caught in a raging fire, the fire will not burn them. If such a living being can recite the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva and can cultivate, then if he enters a great fire, the fire will not be able to burn him. Sutra Third, since contemplation and listening have turned around and come back, I can make it so that if living beings have a floundering in deep water, the water cannot drown them. Commentary. Someone says, I will test Kuan Yin Bodhisattva to see if he really respond. I sit on a pile of wood and set it afire and see if I burn up. In that case, you will certainly burn. But why does the sutra say that if you enter a great fire, it will not burn you? That's because the if means that it happens to you without your intending it. Someone else says, Kuan Yin Bodhisattva says that if one is caught in deep water, one will not be drowned, so i just jump into the ocean and see if I drown. Again, you're sure to drown. It is when you unexpectedly meet with suffering or difficulty that Kuan Yin Bodhisattva will rescue you. But if your intention is to test him out, he will pay no attention to you. Because basically, you don't believe in Kuan Yin Bodhisattva. If you really believed in him, there would be no reason to test him out. The safest thing would be not to test him out. Sutra Fourth, since false thinking is cut off and my mind is without thoughts of killing or harming, I can make it so that if living beings enter the territory of ghosts, the ghosts cannot harm them. Commentary If false thinking is cut off and you don't have any ideas of killing or harming, and if you can recite the name of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva, you can enable beings who enter the region of Rakshasa ghosts not to not be harmed by the ghosts. Sutra Fifth Since I am permitted with hearing and have brought hearing to accomplishment, so that the six sense organs have dissolved and returned to become identical with hearing. I can make it so that if living beings are about to be wounded, the knives will break into pieces. I can cause swords of war to have no more effect than if they were to slice into water or if one were to blow upon light. Commentary Fifth since I am permitted with hearing and have brought hearing to accomplishment, so that the six sense organs have dissolved and returned to become identical with hearing, that is, when the skill of cultivating the return of the hearing to hear the self-nature is accomplished, the six sense organs function mutually. Then I can make it so that if living beings are about to be wounded, the knives will break into pieces. For instance, suppose someone takes up a knife with the intent of cutting off someone's head. Just as the blade is about to fall, the knife of itself breaks into pieces. I can cause words of war to have no more effect than if they were to slice into water or if one were to blow upon light. I can cause a sharp weapon which is about to cut into someone's shoulder to have the effect of slicing into water. That is, once it has passed through, it is gone and no injury is sustained. Or I can make the cut of the blade have the effect of blowing upon light. That is, no effect since no matter how much you blow on, it, on, uh, you blow on light, it will not move.